Hello, my name is Bob Foster, and I'm making a short video here on uh, why um, you as a customer might want to use the uh, PowerVM LPM uh, Simplified Remote uh, Tool for your SSR operations. So let's get going. So uh, this is the agenda. I have actually, in the last couple days, have been getting questions about what does our automation tool do versus what a customer can do uh, by themselves without any sort of tools when they need to do simplified remote restart on the PA. So, um, so what we're going to talk about here uh, uh, in some quick steps here is, you know, why is SSR more enterprise ready than before? And what steps does a customer need to do SSR when they have an outage? And what type of uh, skilled person do you need to do these types of uh, uh, operations during SRR? And then after this, uh, the, the server is repaired and you want to move your partitions back to where they came from, uh, how do you get everything back to the, uh, the server? And then uh, we'll talk about these things here. Then we'll talk about how the, uh, the, uh, the automation tool can make this uh, easier and faster for you. And uh, I'm not going to talk about what SRR is, but if you can go off and there are some videos here on this page, and then there's some more videos at the end that even have more about the tool and uh, other features. So Simplified Remote Restart has been around, is for your Power 8 servers only. So if you don't have Power 8 servers, you're not going to be worried about Simplified Remote Restart. And um, they, there's a new release of the HMC, and this is uh, in May of this year. And it's added features that I think uh, are will satisfy our most demanding enterprise level customers. So um, one of the features, uh, new features in the HMC is that uh, the server can be completely offline. Yeah, your FSP could have died. I uh, make an exaggeration that you could have your server be thrown out the window, crash to the street below, on fire burning, <laughs> cables dangling from the IT center down to the the street and you can still restart those partitions on that server down there uh, to another server so this is an extremely powerful feature of course you don't have to it doesn't have to be that extreme but that's an extreme example uh, you can now do some final restart across multiple HMC's with this new release and you can also have the ability to map your virtual fiber channel adapters for those of you that are familiar with live partition mobility and have more have two or more pairs of Vialo servers uh, you know that when you do LPM, uh, sometimes um, your um, the, the destination um, VLS where you're going to host your uh, MPIV adapters is non-deterministic. Well, now with the new version of the tool, or with the new version of the HMC, you can have it be deterministic and set those values. But let's talk about how we would do all this stuff here when we have an unplanned outage and uh, everybody wants everything back up online. So you've had a crash. Let's talk about what you would do after a server crash and you want to use the SRR. So um, a server's crashed and some or all the partitions need to be restarted. So this is our scenario. So um, let's, you know, if you have only one L part to be restarted, you know, this most of this presentation you don't care about. There is a feature you do care about toward the end, but some of this stuff here is for definitely when you have more than one partition you want to recover. So first off, you got to figure out where to put these partitions. This is step one. You may have lots of partitions that you want to get restarted, and they're not all going to fit on one server. You have to figure out which partitions can fit on which servers and, uh, and how you want to spread them around. So, you know, you'll look at the CPU memory. You'll look at how much CPU resources it's using, how much memory resources it's using for each partition, and start to uh, put together a little piece of paper and start just saying I'll put you know this many CPUs of memory here this many there and figure out where everything will fit so you got to fit these things around then step two is if you have power enterprise pools which uh, I see at uh, multiple enterprise level customers you'll need to actually move the CPU and memory resources from that failed server to the destination servers before you do this simplified remote restart so you'll have to do some power enterprise pools movements and then if you have the virtual fiber channel adapters, the MPIV that I talked about on the previous page, many enterprise level customers want to control where these adapters get hosted and their HPA mappings. This was added into live partition mobility many years ago because this was a requirement for our customers at the enterprise level. And we have customers that want to be able to do that with simplified remote restart. And uh, 
So you'll want to figure out how you want to, where you want to host them and all that type of stuff. And really, you're going to have to build an HMC command line with the appropriate syntax to do these mappings. And this syntax is not for the faint of heart. It's complicated, you know. So, and then number four, you sort of figured out, you know, where you want to go. You've done your Power Enterprise pool stuff. You figured out which MPIV adapters you want to map. And maybe some of them you don't care about where they end up being mapped, but some you do. Now you got to start doing an HMC command for each one of these partitions. There's no GUI to, for the HMC to do some provided remote restart. You, as an end user, end user, will have to write an HMC command line and get all the syntax right to perform the move. And of course, everybody's yelling at you to get these things up and running. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure to do some not simple work in a quick amount of time. So, uh, in fact, on the very next page, I say, you know, it's pretty clear the steps on the previous page are going to take some time to get it right. And in the middle here, I say this recovery is going to have to be done by uh, someone with very good admin skills. But you're going to have to have them make the right choices on where to place the partitions, uh, how to move the capacity on demand, power enterprise pools if you have it, and then build some complicated HMC command lines for each partition. So if you have 40 partitions you move, want to move, you'll need 40 HMC command lines. And if you want this VIOS HBA mappings that I talked about, your command line starts to look like this command at the below that's called RR start L par minus O restart, blah, 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 blah. And where I've highlighted these in different colors, those are values that would have to change on each of the next 39 partitions. This might be partition one that you move, the partition two is going to have a different minus P operation because the P is the name of the LPAR. And this virtual fiber channel mappings, these are slot specific for the particular LPAR and all these numbers of mappings would have to change. So it's, uh, like you see, that's not a very simple command line to do and you have to get these backslashes correct and you have to have them in the right spots and you need to have these right number of parameters on these options here. So it's not quite rocket science, but it's not something you'll learn in five minutes during a crisis. So we've, we've, we've gone past this. We've got everything moved over. And now the partition is, uh, the server has been repaired. Well, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to move these partitions back to that server that's been repaired. And you'll use live partition mobility to move these partitions back. Now, all the stuff above was complicated. This is even more complicated, this step is. Most customers want the partitions to be returned to the server exactly as they were before the outage. They have mapped things to different VLSs. They have virtual slot numbers they want to follow. They have HBA mappings they want to follow. They want everything to be exactly the same as when we had the outage and quickly took everything off. Well, you're going to have, and on top of that, in the middle here, there are new features of live partition mobility that allows you to do uh, enhance your performance during LPM. And you may want to, since you move 40 partitions away in this example, you want to move 40 back, but some are bigger than others, and you want to group them and stuff like that. And so now you have to start um, figuring out how you want to group them uh, along with um, also putting together a command line to do that. Because you're going to have to use HMC command line to move these things back to the exact slot numbers. There's nothing on the HMC GUI that says make everything the way it was before. And there's nothing anywhere that does that. Only this LPM tool that we have can put things back the way they came off, even for SRR. So it's a complicated thing to put things back, and you also have to take care of your power enterprise pools. And here, you're definitely going to have to have your best admin do this. There's no if, ands, or buts. This is a complicated, even more complicated command line to do. And you need to remember what everything was set to before to do it, so you'll have had had previous plans or something telling you what things were so you know how to build the commands to put them back to where they were. So can we do this faster? And of course the answer is yes or I wouldn't be making this video. This PowerVM LPM slash Simplified Remote Restart Automation Tool is from Lab Services. Lab Services is a worldwide team and, we're, and so you can get this tool in any country in the world. And we have 160 customers using this tool already. And they use it for LPM for the main part. And SRR has only gotten in, you know, been around for about a year or so. So customers are using more of the features of SRR. And the nice thing about this tool it can be used by less skilled admins. You don't have to have your best person uh, dial in to the conference call and rebuild everything. You can actually have either they can the less skilled person do it real time, 
or if you want a complicated build to be done, you could have had uh, some plans built by a more advanced admin that these less skilled admins couldn't take advantage of when they have an outage. And so what specific issues can the tool address? So this tool is a GUI, and uh, so um, uh, the, you log into the GUI, and it can determine the placement of all the partitions from the cell failed server across many destination partitions. I have videos on these features. I'm not going to go into all the details of it here. Uh, you, the placement can be modified by the user, and there's multiple placement policies. This tool understands your power enterprise pools and will move things automatically. The tool can be used to specify your virtual fiber channel adapter uh, on the SRR. The tool can be used to build plans in advance. I just mentioned on the previous page, and you use these tool uh, plan pre-built plans when you have an outage, so you don't you can have a less skilled person import these plans to the tool. And last but not least is that after you after the tool has moved things away, when you want to bring things back, the tool knows how to put move things away using simplified remote restart. The tool knows how to bring those things back to the original server using live partition mobility, setting all the original settings you had before. And of course, it will take care of your power enterprise rules, power enterprise pool resources also. And on top of it, it's fast and easy to use. So, um, you know, looked at the other videos to see the complete features of the tool. Here are some videos on YouTube. There are some, also some other videos on the second chart of this chart deck that aren't listed here. And uh, so go look at that and notice that these are case sensitive uh, URLs. And if you want to learn more about this or you, know, or you want to try to engage us and, and get the tool into your environment, here's five different email addresses you can send email to. Uh, I'm at the very bottom, Bob Foster, send me an email and uh, we'll figure out uh, who we need to talk to for your particular customer, if you're a business partner, or if you're a customer who you need to talk to to get things done. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.